Thank you, Chairman, dear colleagues. Uh, after this very nice presentation on the vascular uh, subject, I will uh, present my uh, topics on uh, the surgical management of uh, middle cerebral artery aneurysm with the Clip First policy. This is a, a subject of controversies uh, since uh, the uh, description and the publication of the international subarachnoid aneurysm trials. What was uh, the first uh, multicentral international prospective randomized trials was compared the techniques of uh, clipping versus uh, coiling in uh, uh, cerebral aneurysm. All of you know that the results of these uh, uh, trials have shown that uh, uh, there is a, a, a better outcome after coiling, and uh, it demonstrated a 7.4% absolute risk reduction in proportion of death or uh, disability when you compare with uh, uh, clipping. These studies, of course, has a dramatic impact on our uh, policy and the management of aneurysmal hemorrhage. And many of you know a lot of limitation of this study, but since uh, uh, one of this limitation that the result of this eyesight has been uh, extrapolated to all type of aneurysm, uh, uh, whether uh, anterior or posterior circulation aneurysm, whether on ICOM or uh, uh, MCA aneurysm. The question today is uh, uh, still uh, 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 is to clip or to coil. I know that there are, have been many advances in both techniques of surgery, but also in endovascular surgery, and, but many controversies still exist today between uh, the two uh, modalities and the management of MCA injuries. First, there is a, a scarcity of class one data on MCA aneurysm and when we compare the two techniques. The second that when we review the literature and the recurrent uh, available literature, we found that many studies compared the uh, efficacy of the two management uh, modalities on all intracranial aneurysm, but give general conclusion extrapolated to all kind of aneurysm. The MCAs are considered unfavorable for coiling based on their trifurcated anatomy, of course, their dysmorphic shape and wide necks, and uh, most often there is incorporating of uh, uh, one or both M2 in the sac, what makes the treatment by endovascular uh, very risky. It is clear that the last decade, the endovascular has improved uh, with the new devices, but still this is one field where there is a discussion between surgery and uh, uh, endovascular. And as I said, this uh, application of the endovascular in the, uh, the treatment of MCA is still limited, and it's more uh, than limited in uh, developing countries where the finances uh, is one of the most important issue. And we know that these devices are very costly and very uh, expensive, and it's very difficult sometimes to offer to the patient uh, this kind of treatment. In the uh, contrary, uh, the MCA aneurysm are uh, considered favorable for clipping because uh, they are accessible. You are just to open the sylvian fissure and you are on uh, the aneurysm. You can make a, a, a good exposure around the, the sac. They can be, as I say, easily manipulated after slipping the sylvian fissure with no retraction or minimal retraction. But also, uh, we can uh, uh, use, in case of difficult uh, or giant anaphylis, some uh, uh, surgical technique like uh, thrombectomy, clip restriction, so it's done by uh, uh, fenestrated clip, or some type bypass. Uh, also, uh, almost one third of patients uh, presented with uh, intracranial uh, hematoma, compressive intracranial hematoma, and uh, the indication for surgery in urgent uh, situation is done, and uh, uh, doing the same procedure, we can uh, clip the aneurysm and remove, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, uh, the clot and uh, clip the aneurysm. The endovascular technique, of course, has evolved greatly over a period of time. We are using balloon-assisted embolization with multi-catheters, with stent technology, 
uh, with Floyd Diverters, and uh, uh, we know about every one, two years we have a new devices, but still, we look at the results, there is uh, uh, a lack of long-term safety information in the literature, and uh, uh, in, in, in uh, developing country, there is a problem, as I said, of uh, the availability and the most of this advanced technology is not accessible to uh, uh, most of the patients, and uh, this is uh, one of uh, uh, the problems. We uh, also see if the, uh, there is uh, uh, a modification of our policy or the management of uh, brain cerebral aneurysm, and you can see here that how the uh, endovascular uh, uh, introduction and uh, utilization have impact uh, the management. And this is a very interesting study. The uh, authors uh, have made a survey around many uh, neurosurgeons all around the world. And uh, you can see here that they have a uh, uh, response from 283 uh, neurosurgeons and neuroradiologists. And uh, can see that most of our colleague uh, neurosurgeons in Europe or in the States uh, uh, favorites uh, uh, coiling and IC uh, internal communication artery aneurysm. But when we uh, deal with the MCA aneurysm, most of uh, the neurosurgeons are still uh, uh, favoring clipping uh, instead of uh, uh, proposing patients for uh, coiling. So even with the development of endovascular uh, technique, there is still place for surgery and MCA uh, uh, aneurysm. We review our uh, clinical material and uh, we uh, uh, try to see if the introduction of the endovascular technique in our department, was was done in 2005, has impact our uh, uh, management uh, and how impact the results of uh, 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 taking care of this patient. And this is a whole series uh, in the Department of Hospital Speciality has started with uh, Professor Khamenei in, uh, in, in, in 1983. And uh, we uh, review all the cases that have been treated after the area of 2005. And you can see here that uh, we uh, treated one more than 100 cases of MCA by uh, a clear first policy, policy and uh, uh, we compare this result with the cases that have been treated with our endovascular team in the same period. So 328 aneurysm have been treated between the, uh, 2005 and 2016, and among them we have 106 aneurysm that uh, has been treated with this uh, uh, policy. And when we uh, to regard the results, first uh, we uh, uh, see the uh, distribution of our uh, patients uh, regarding the WFNS grades, and you can see that uh, uh, almost 54% uh, uh, of the patients were in grade one, and uh, uh, they have uh, a good clinical status, and if you at grade one and two, so almost two-thirds of the patients were uh, very good grade at the admission. And uh, uh, what is also uh, interesting, that almost half of the patient the series have uh, a Fisher grade uh, uh, four, because of course uh, uh, there is hematoma, most of the cases there is hematoma in uh, uh, surrounding uh, uh, the aneurysm rupture. And as I said, most of the cases were rupture aneurysm, 100 cases were rupture aneurysm, and we had only six cases and rupture uh, aneurysm. This is the classification and distribution of uh, the cases we treated, and most of the patients, 77%, were one, uh, harboring just one MC aneurysm, and 15%, there are uh, uh, other aneurysms located uh, in uh, other uh, parts of uh, the Willis. Uh, Polygon. And uh, uh, when we uh, compare this uh, uh, location, you see that 70% uh, of uh, our uh, material uh, are located in uh, the bifurcation uh, uh, middle cerebral aneurysm. What were our uh, treatment modalities? As I said, most of the patient, uh, 97 and uh, aneurysm were uh, clipped, and only uh, 16 were uh, embolized. And uh, this was, uh, uh, as I said, we prefer to uh, offer to our patient 
directly uh, uh, surgical uh, 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 solution for uh, clip end arteries. And we review our uh, result regarding the factor that may influence the patient's uh, early clinical progression and uh, after the management. And uh, there are lots of uh, uh, numbers here, but just we can uh, say that when we compare uh, the impact of the age of the uh, status raptor versus a raptor or the WFNS grade on the Fisher grade on the outcome, we found that uh, the age the WFNS grade and Fisher grade were the three uh, factors that uh, are prognostic factors, which is, of course, known in also in the literature, and uh, uh, we expect uh, these, uh, uh, these results. But the number of aneurysms treated, the, sty the size of the aneurysm, the treatment modality seems to not to uh, make any uh, difference on the impact or uh, uh, the outcome. Regarding the functional outcome, you can see here that uh, we compare uh, uh, the, the, the patient uh, regarding their outcome at three months, at six months, and uh, at 12 months. And here, you can find that uh, the most important factor in uh, regarding uh, the outcome is, of course, the WFNS grade at admission, but also the status rupture versus uh, uh, non ruptured aneurysm, which uh, make the difference uh, mostly at uh, uh, one year post uh, management. And uh, we compare also the quality of exclusion in these two uh, kind of uh, group, and you can see that uh, the clipping group, we can achieve 73% of our patient can be clipped with complete occlusion uh, when we compare with the, the coiling group, which was just one, uh, half of them will have a complete occlusion after uh, coiling. And the functional outcome by using the grouped MRS at one year, the overall result is uh, very uh, good. 70% of all patients whose aneurysm were clipped had excellent functional outcome. And good clinical and Fisher grades persistently and statically significant predictor better outcome at three, six, and 12 months on follow-up. Of course, uh, as I said, the location, the number of aneurysm and treatment modality had a new impact on functional uh, impact. And these are uh, some uh, cases, illustrative cases. This is a patient who presented with uh, subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage, WFNS grade two, Fisher three. And uh, uh, we can see here, this is a straightforward procedure. The aneurysm is, is located here, and uh, we just by a slit, slight uh, uh, splitting the, the fissure, we can get access to the aneurysm. Uh, there is no uh, branches incorporated in the sac, and uh, it is a very straightforward uh, procedure. Uh, in this case, we prefer to go from outside to inside, from distal to proximal. We don't uh, dissect uh, the uh, middle cerebral artery uh, trunk, but we go through directly to the aneurysm sac, and uh, we uh, uh, put a clip on uh, the sac. And this is a post-operative uh, control to win the uh, complete exclusion of uh, the sac. The second case is more complicated cases. We are dealing with uh, a dysplasic uh, uh, case. And in this case, we need uh, some uh, uh, reconstruction of uh, the uh, uh, middle cerebral artery. And you can see this is after, uh, you can see this is uh, the, 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 we're trying to uh, dissect the, the, the sac, the sac here. This is uh, uh, some atherosclerotic uh, part of the sac here. I try to uh, dissect the sac from M M2, M1, M2, and then we uh, first try to put uh, a clip, and you see that it slipped because it contains some athero. The sac contains some atherosclerosis material, and then we uh, put uh, try to uh, decompress uh, the the sac and uh, to open it make uh, uh, the compression and then uh, we place uh, the clip in a way to uh, completely obliterate uh, the aneurysm by preserving of course uh, 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 the, the M1 and M2 segments. <coughs> Thank you. 
This is the last uh, uh, case we presented. This is uh, uh, WFNS Grad 1 2 uh, separate hemorrhage with, um, as I say, it's very superficial. You can use just a needle to, up to split the fissure. This is a giant aneurysm, and uh, there is no retraction. We can go through the sylvian. The aneurysm is already here. And uh, by the section, the M1, M2 segment, we can uh, make uh, a very good, uh, nice dissection of the, the, the neck. Try to, okay, and we put already a first uh, clip, temporary clip on M1 here. And then we, uh, we dissect the sac. The sac is already decompressed here. And uh, we'll put uh, uh, a clip uh, to uh, uh, completely exclude the side. There is two clips have been used here, and we'll be sure that uh, it's completely occluded. So the question is how to clip or to coil, uh, which technique is most cost effective, what is the financial impact of both techniques uh, in developing countries, and what techniques should be developed in priority in countries with limited resources. And this is just two slides to uh, uh, show you what the results in the literature. And we can see here, this is a meta-analysis that shows that uh, the four decades surgical series with MCA's aneurysm has consistently demonstrated excellent results with rates of complete aneurysm occlusion more than 90%. When we compare uh, this result, surgical results, with the endovascular result, you can see that uh, the endovascular technique can lead to only 53% of complete aneurysm occlusion. And uh, if we use uh, some complicated uh, devices like uh, stents or fluid diverter, that uh, uh, we can uh, increase uh, uh, the percentage of complete uh, uh, occlusion, but uh, unfortunately with uh, increasing the mortality and morbidity. And when compare the cost, uh, the coiling techniques are more expensive than the uh, surgical techniques. On conclusion, surgery is cost effective and should remain the treatment of choice for uh, MCAs. Uh, Clipin has an added advantage in managing MCAs patients who often presented with uh, anterocranial hemorrhage. And uh, every patient, of course, is different. So as it's an reason that patient and devilized team approach provide maximum safety. The endovascular management, of course, is here, but uh, in developing country, there is still a problem uh, for having it for available for all the patients. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wahabi.